That's rad. Welcome back to another episode of Cactus Quest. It is a rainy day here. There is drizzle falling out of the sky. All the winter growers love it. I'm in Vista, California at Desert Theater Nursery. And this is a really cool kind of uh, uh, video that we're gonna be doing because I'm not only gonna be meeting with the founder of the nursery. Hi, my name's Jay Jackson and I started Desert Theater Cactus Nursery. But I'm also gonna be here with the current proprietor of the nursery as well. Yeah, look at that fatty. So we're here in one of the greenhouses that you have on site, which this is one of how many? 10, maybe? About okay. seven greenhouses right seven. now. Okay, cool. And so how long, this was founded when exactly? Um, well, it started in uh, Watsonville, California. Okay. Uh, this is Desert Theater, spelled with an R-E rather than an E-R. Okay. <laughs> and we did catalog sales and local sales and flea markets. And okay. We had paid the dues, you know. <laughs> it, Watsonville, Northern California, California that's uh, the home of the artichoke? Is yes, that? that's right. Okay. Castroville. Okay, gotcha. So it's that, that area. Right. How did you get into the hobby? How did well, you get into the, the business? I had a music store in Portland, Oregon, and uh, one of my customers was moving and said, would you like my cactus and succulent collection? Okay. <laughs> I go, yeah, and I got addicted to them, and then I moved to Santa Cruz, California, managed a recording studio there. Okay. And just got sick of musicians. I go, I love these plants. Yeah. <laughs> so I started in a little nursery up there. It uh, seems like that's one common <clears throat> thing that I notice about plant people. Like plant people can tolerate other plant people, you know, but it seems like all plant people sort of have lost a bit of tolerance for the rest of people. Yeah. The music business was a mess. Like people paid <laughs> fortune in the studio and they got drunk and yeah. took drugs. And I, can, I can imagine. <laughs> and they, at that time, they were not in the business at all. <laughs> imagine, you, you know, you, you can hear like Janis Joplin, you know, we're off in the background coming out of some, you know, Thunderbird or whatever, you know, driving by and you, your bell bottoms are swinging, you know, they're swinging back and forth. You got your platform shoes on, you know, you're leaving the cactus nursery, right? You're going down to the music shop and you're thinking to yourself, maybe I'm done with the music business, baby. Maybe it's time to just go straight all photosynthesis from here on out, baby. I'm just going to grow cactus. That's all I'm going to do. Boom. It's going to be a life. It's going to be a, a, a theater of the desert, baby. That's what it's going to be for a hundred years. Okay, what did you say this is called? Euphorbia coralescence. Euphorbia coralescence. Is it, is it called coralescence because of the way the uh, ridges I look? Is that normal idea. for them to look that way? Yeah. Wow, that's... That's a super slow one. There's a small field of them up there at the top. We're here. It's, it's now, it's now kind of actually like raining on us, but you know what? It's not cold. That's one of the beauty. That's one of the beautiful things uh, about Southern California. Even if it's cold, once it starts raining, it seems to not be as cold. God, these are awesome looking. Oh yeah. <laughs> Life finds a way. He's coming back. Nice Perry eye. Is that Perry eye right there? Yep. Can you name this guy? I forgot the name of it. This blue guy right here. Oh yeah, that's uh, brown ingia hurt langiana. Yeah, there you go. Uh, some, some, some has uh, befallen this poor, poor soul. That's nice. I am a sucker for water uh, beads on plants. You know? Wow. Well, certain things like a like a saguaro. Yeah. You know, saguaro wants that heat, and then that summer rain. It's the exact opposite here. Yeah, here. I mean, I've tried to grow some saguaros, and they're probably. 10, 12 years old, and they probably grew an inch, maybe. What is this? Pachycerus pringlia. Is it really? Yeah, Cardone. And then up above. Wait up, a minute, are you sure? Yeah. I have never seen such a blue Pachycerus pringlia. Very blue. Wow. They're all kind of the same. Fascinating, I, I wonder if it's a hybrid, maybe possibility that's so interesting yeah because this is this is these are all the same batch huh yeah how old how long have these been in the ground here uh, probably 15 years or longer it's called pachycerius pectin aboriginum pectin aboriginum 
But look at the seed pods. Yeah, I was wondering if that's what these were. Yeah, and it, I mean, you can see it's the same type of seed pod as Pringly Eye. Yeah. I don't think we got any seed. I'd love, love to have some seed again, but. What a weird looking one. Look at that little guy. Huh? A little hummingbird come in there, stick his beak in there, you know, get something sweet for the day, flutter off, try not to have a heart attack. Winter bloomers. A lot of man hours in this field. <laughs> Damn near becoming a tree right there. Yeah, that's a monster. One of my favorite things about this channel is all of the different people I get to meet, all of the different places that I get to go. I just love walking through a place with old plants. You know, there's something about being around so many old plants. It just, I don't know, it makes me feel comfortable, makes me feel at ease. And uh, it stokes a childlike sense of wonder. I gotta tell you, you know, you drive through the cities and that just monotonous metropolis, it's like endless. Oh, I, I, you gotta get to the plants. So this house is a little, this was kind of our stock house. Yeah? Yeah, Euphorbia cubinensis. Cubinensis. Yes, this is a beauty. I happen to know where this one grows. Sipocerus? Yeah. Bradii? Yeah, I, I know because I've posted it before and I, I a lot, a lot of the people that follow me are in Brazil. It's like one of the top countries uh, of people that follow me. So shout out to everybody in Brazil. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, we'll just we'll just keep stripping pups off these guys. Yeah, these things look almost like a cactus. Like black. Yeah. Yeah, because it's interesting. Those back there, the like the, the big ones have like the black spines, and then these look. They're all yeah, like... but this is this one's different. We grew a a batch of we we're growing everything from seed. Yeah. We used to get this all this seed from this great seed person, Hildegard Nace. Yeah. Hildegard, yeah. Yep, and um get really crazy stuff. We we grew some Luchtenbergia principis and I remember one came up variegated. Nice. Just one variegated. And this was probably back in you know 92, 94 and this guy came in, collector one time, and he goes, oh man, I'll give you $500 for that thing. Well, okay, take it. I, if I ever grow variegated plants, I always sell them because don't, they don't do it for me. There are some, Yeah. there are some, but by and large, variegated cacti generally don't do it for me. Right, yeah. well we used to, with all, with all this seed stuff. Just for just a moment. Yeah, and what's weird about this guy too is some are fuzzy, but some are real, Oh, and that's chubbier too. Yeah. That's a really pretty one. You know, coming in and looking, you know, walking through a nursery where normally you see like a lot of foliage or roses or whatever, and then you see this, something that looks like this, you know, you kind of, you have to take it, anybody would look at that and go, what? What is that thing, you know? And then you touch it, you're like, wow, it's soft. And then once you start to research them at all, that's, that's where the, uh, that's where the, that's where the addiction seems to really be able to take hold in your brain. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and give this the, uh, I know it's a little early in the year to do this, but we're gonna give this, uh, this Draco the Air Root of the Year Award. I feel confident to say that nobody will find, I challenge the internet to find me beefier air roots on a plant. And if you can send me photos of beefier air roots on a plant, I'm gonna give you a free pot and a plant of my choice that I grew myself. I'm dead serious. That's insane. Oh my goodness. Rap music nowadays, I hear it all the time. They're always talking about they're riding around with the Draco. It's annoying. Is this what they're talking about? This is what? This is not Trico Sirius. This is not Myrtillo, is it? What is this, Pulas Pulaskia Chichipi? Pulaskia Chichipi. God, that is a cool one. Is that Goliath? Yeah. So I, I believe it's Bane's Eye with Vombi but it grows really fast, really aggressive. You put any water on it. And it's crazy, it's it's really wide. So you so net, you don't water it all during the summer? None of this field gets watered anymore. At all? Nothing. It's all big enough, I imagine, yeah? yeah? To yeah. hang in, We yeah. We watered it for years, had a nice sprinkler system, and the field, it just doesn't need it. 
Wow, okay. So, where are we? I, I got a little speechless walking in. We just call this our San Marcos location. Uh, we've been here for about two years, and a lot of the stuff from the Vista location, which you just saw, was moved over here to propagate and kind of have more of a material that isn't quite seen so often. Oh, dude, so you've got the, this is the Lamari uh, training facility right here? Yeah, so these guys I bought about six inches tall. Yeah. They cost me 50 bucks a piece. Yeah. And I bought them, I bought 50 of them, and they've kind of really done well in here. So this next spring, we'll go ahead and hack these off and we'll give them, you know, we'll hack them off to about here reroute that and then these will pop that's then, awesome yeah this is a this is a phenomenal plant there's serious for bezii spiralis yeah, correct right. yeah yeah there's not a whole lot of them out there they they are out there um but even as a landscape plant what in what is happening here i don't know look absolutely spineless there's not a spine on it this one's just got it's this is the single spine one creature. spine that's a little bit over there. Those are the ones that Whoa, I was telling you that the dude. rabbits ate. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they, yeah. so it, it's kind of, it's, I, I would call this enormous. See how they got really weird. Yeah, they really sure did. Jeez Louise, dude. Those are spectacular. Yeah, and these are the original parents. And what I did on these guys, I did a hot nail these guys. Okay, yeah, yeah. So how long ago did you hot nail those? Uh, last year. So we got the man malaria lane here. And this is what, Pelargonium? Yep. Winter grower, yeah? Yep. So how big is this greenhouse? So the entire- Because it seems enormous. Yeah, the entire facility right here is about, uh, it's on seven acres, about 32,000 square feet of greenhouse. How, you guys have a ton of these Bert Lingianas. Yeah, because I haven't been, I, I don't want to sell them. Brown Ingia, Hurt <coughs> Lingia. Bert Lingia, I just combined them together. Yeah, so what was on the table there where you see the empty spaces is what I've actually sold I want to cut these guys. Chop them and see if they, like, Yeah, will... make some stock. I need to make some stock. There's quite a bit of stuff that in here that I don't want to sell just because I want to make stock. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's like a, it's like a factory. Look at that, dude. Beauty. So you guys got the aloes. You got the, the sleeping table of pacopodiums. Yeah. Right here. Oh. That is a seed horn. Yes, sir. On the pacopodium. And so what happens is, when these seed horns are ready, they open up. And inside of these horns, what you have is there's basically like, think of a fly fishing lure. That's kind of, you have like a seed attached to essentially what is like a natural pacopodium created fly fishing lure. And its purpose is so that it can blow, blow in the wind yep. and travel off and, uh, and it gets distributed that way. Most pacopodiums are like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Oh, man. Look at these big boys. Deuterconia. Yeah. Wow. So this is in the uh, bromeliad. It's in the same family as the pineapple, actually. Yep. And so these basically, they look soft, but if you touch no, these, they, they, they are like extremely sharp, man. They're yeah. so sharp. <laughs> A little Soclover Butea in there. God, there's probably 20 heads. Golly, there's something about seeing tons of the same plant. It's like very visually satisfying. Absolutely. Yeah, you can see how many little guys I got going here. Right. And I just started ripping apart the big guys. And so you just take that big clump, tear it apart, plop these down. Yep. When you do that, do you let the roots dry? Do you let them dry out at all or you just go straight away? Straight in. Somebody had asked me on the video that I posted a couple of days ago, they were like, hey man, how come we didn't see the uh, the totem the totem poles? And uh, well, I, ju I just couldn't get that far south. So there you go. The, the, this is probably a larger and healthier population than you would actually see in Baja, sadly. Oh look, here's a, so you're growing some aloes? Yep, right? did, these did are do aloes? some seeds. Um, these are all Mexican fence post, what wow. I did. These things are so a lot of phylum. The, 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 the texture and the feel, it's like, it's like if somebody had a really big floppy ear, you know? I'm trying not to do too much watering right now. Yeah. But man, if you were to water these today, those, these suckers are poke, you know, getting like a thumb. Yeah. I met a guy Thomas. named Thomas Cole. He's got a place up in Santa Barbara. 
He recently wrote a book. Look him up. His name is Thomas Cole. I'll have to do that. Yeah, and he, um, he's got all these beautiful, beautiful aloes that you never see. So here's part of his stuff that he's done. Montecola. That's uh, awesome. He, he's got one that he named for his brother on honor of his brother. It's called Lukiana. But these, this is stuff that I got. Look how beautiful that is. Yeah, that is nice. Let's, let's pull this guy out of here. Can you read that? McClellan? McClellan? Dyer Dawa? That's where West of Dyer Dawa. Five kilometers west of Dyer Dawa. Yeah. That's cool, man. So this might be something that he took the seed off and he writes so small. That's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for watching till the end. I want to send a very special thank you to Jay and to Brandon for opening up the nursery and to open up their home to me and to, to allow me in to show everybody. It is uh, it's a real honor and privilege to be able to do what I do. And uh, on that note, I was asked at uh, Inner City and I ran into some people out in Tucson and a couple of different people over the last year or so have asked me to make a Patreon account so that people that want to support me can. So uh, I did that. In the description below, you'll find a link not only to all of my social links and to the Desert Theater website, but you'll also find a link to my Patreon. If you'd like to become a supporter, I have a couple of different ways of doing that there. Go check it out. Until the next video, I appreciate y'all. Peace.